welcome, welcome to episode 47 of the A Travel Talk Show, a podcast of the A Travel Marketing Group and A Canada Travel. Com. The A Travel Talk Show is podcast broadcast live every Tuesday, <laughs> 7 p.m. PST from our base camp. Somewhere's here in beautiful Maple Leaf, Canada, a hidden Maple Leaf, Canada location as we travel and we move. Tonight, our special guest is author and multi-Emmy award-winning host of the Travel Scope TV show, our new friend, Joseph Rosendo. I believe, Colin, we are about to get yes. travel out. We're going to get travelized tonight. Travelized. Sounds good. I'm in. Yep. That's our Canadianism of the night. Every night we pick out a Canadian word that we make up. Means nothing. Last last, <laughs> last week was birdologist. This week it's travelized. Yeah, with we're getting travelized. To, we're going to have to put up the dictionary as we go. Yes. Yes. So get this call. Joseph has been a travel food and wine journalist as well as a travel broadcaster for over 40 years. Uh, I know. I've seen, I've, you know, watch the intro. I've seen his shows. I've seen some of them and they're, they're impressive. I mean, who doesn't want to be Joseph Rosendo? Pick me. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, hey, impressive. His, show, his show, just for you newbies out there and for you newly watching Canucks and for people and our friends from around the world who are travel addicts as much as us, the Travel Scope show is now in its 12th season. And get this, it reaches 98% of the U.S. market and 286 million viewers on more than 500 public television stations, including Maple Leaf Canada. Wow. Yep. Yep. That is... Yeah, wow. but you know what? Joseph ain't happy with just a TV show. No, no, uh, he wants. No, <laughs> no, no. What he does in his time is he decides to write this awesome book, which I got a copy of. Thank you to Joseph, called mm -hmm. "Musings: A Short Pursuit of Pleasure and Other Journeys." And I'd love to talk about this, but then I'd spoil it for Joseph. So I'm just mm -hmm. going to show you the cover, and that's all you get from me. Joseph's going to have to tell you the rest because that is not what we do here: is spoil the punchline. Joseph will be joining us in a few minutes, but first, as always, some introductions. My name is Greg Gerard. I am the co-bro founder of the award-winning website, acanatravel.com. Storyteller, adventure seeker on our award-winning blog called Two Brothers, Two Feet, Two Curious, Two Canadian, and your co-bro host of the A Travel Talk Show. <laughs> this suave and dashing looking connect next to me is... Colin Gerard, the other co-bro host of this uh, great A Travel Talk show, uh, co-bro host of, uh, not host, co-bro, co-owner of acantravel.com and um, co, no, the head tech, not co there, and uh, keeper of the code. You are a lot of co-broing right now. You're trying to yeah, co-bro yeah. me. I know, I know. and I'm a storyteller too. Just you know, not as much. And, you're you know, a you, no, you're a storyteller on code, and that's it. I think we need to start having a brother competition here. It uh, seems this is turning into. Oh, uh, well, you know what? We can't fight on live show because we're taking up Joseph's time. So we're, <laughs> we got to move on. Okay. So together we are. What well, people have given us this awesome nickname, and I sort of love it. We are the brothers of tourism. We're homegrown Canadian tourism geeks. We're seekers of adventures, collectors of bumps and bruises, wildlife whispers, and coffee guzzling, road tripping, maple leaf bomber Canucks. And we love every minute of it. So that's who we are. And we're going to tell you a little bit about this show. It's live. Stuff happens. Okay. So everyone all the time. And the nice thing is, because it's live and we're just laid back Canucks, uh, we can deal with it. So just if we can deal with it, our viewers could deal with it. Stop that. If you lose us, moi, and our guest Joseph, who's in our virtual room, I believe he's in the bannock right now. So from what I'm hearing, I think he's in the bannock. And uh, if you do lose us, well, that's Canada. Internet ain't cheap here, and it definitely ain't rural. So, you know, bear with us. And you know what? However, no worries. None whatsoever. We have the connections, and we have the keeper of code, College Gerard here, yes. who will solve any technical issue that comes across this wild and massive set that we have here. So do not at all change the channel. First off, what we're going to talk about, we would like to give a huge shout-out to forward-thinking team of experience Nickel Valley in the beautiful town of Merritt, British Columbia. You know why, Call? 
I think uh, there's something about some sort of award they might have won. Yep. They, more, a few awards, actually. Yes. Last week, Experience Nickel Valley and Merit BC Canada won. And this, they're using the pro, they're, they're using a program called Experience Community that Moi and Junior Moi developed for small and rural Canada communities. And that program won. Get this. Hold on. Buckle in. Put your seat belts. Keep your eyes on the road. The Canada Prestige Award for Canadian Marketing Program of the Year. Woo! That's good. That's pretty hot, I would say. At your service. Yes. And for their small market. Now, in that same week, we were just excited to hear the Experience Nickel Valley Program won the BC Best Community Project Award for under the population of 20,000 population. That award, was, <laughs> did I say that twice? Say that twice real fast. That award was awarded to them by the BCEDA, British Columbia Economic Development Association. Two big awards in one week. One week. So kudos to them. In the same, yes. Now, here's what I'm stoked about. This Experience Nickel Valley Group, this project, they're actually going to go live on Thursday on their show, okay? And what they're going to do is they brought in a CEO of a business here. They brought in one of the, the content marketers, and then they also brought uh, Community Futures, which is a community organization. They brought them in, and what they're going to do, call, is they're going to talk about this program without anyone else. So I'm interested to hear what they have to say from the For third sure. party. sure, from yeah. the benefactors. Yep. So Tom Avon, the big dude at Canadian Procedure Awards, in a relatively short space, here's what he said. In a relatively short space of time, Tourism and Vic Valley has clearly created something unique in the market that is making a big difference to people in the community. The program is both informative and educational and really helps put a focus on local businesses and what they do well. There is no question that the program will encourage more to visit the region. We are very pleased to recognize this hard work so hats off to that group and we are so stoked that they were our pilot project 18 months and we nailed it we knocked it out of the park home run can't keep the baseball store to stuff man it's huge <laughs> right? that's a fabulous review yes i mean that's that's i love it yep so our guest tonight <clears throat> We need to bring on the big show, the main man. Our guest tonight is Joseph Rosendo, an author, writer, journalist, as well as uh, director and host of the multi Emmy Award travel show called Travel Scope. Get ready, people, to be travelized by Joseph. <laughs> this is our Canadianism, and we're going to use it with Joseph all night. So get used to it. It's not in the Webster Dictionary, it's in the Greg and Colin Dictionary, and that's mm. the way we're going to have it. Joseph is, let me tell you a little bit about Joseph Collum. It's, it's a, Please do. I really had to like cut this resume in like four parts because it's so long. So I, I had to pick some highlights. So hopefully Joseph, uh, um, I think he's a humble man. He might not bring up the parts we're missing, but during the interview, we could slide him in. I think we'll just slide him in there. Just, <laughs> just slide maybe, him in. maybe he won't even notice. I'm sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Joseph Renzendo has been a travel, food, and wine journalism, as I said earlier, and travel broadcaster for 40 years since 2007. Joseph has hosted, created, directed, and written the Joseph Renzendo Travel Scope award-winning PBS travel television series. Travel Scope now in its 12th season reaches, as we said, 286 million viewers over 500 public television stations nationwide, as well as airing in, you guessed it, Maple Leaf Canada. Sure. Joseph's Travel Scope website provides access to all his content, so you got to go there. And the good news is, it's on the screen right now below his name, highlighted in bold on our specialized Joseph Rosendo background that we've specifically created just for the mass traveler, the guru of travel, the guru icon travel god, Joseph Rosendo. So, <laughs> recently, Joseph has published a book. Oh, you're going to see is the cover. He has published. Oh, give us a little better look than that, there, bro. I gave him a big look earlier. You bro. Barely. I gave a huge look earlier. <laughs> I mean, we can't give him too much look because then they'll, you know, I don't know. It's you, I'm doing my best here under a lot of pressure. <sighs> Recently, Joseph has published a book called Muse. There he goes. He's putting it up. Musings: The Short Happy Pursuit of Pleasure and Other Journeys, which is drawn from his travel and life experiences. And I have been reading. There it. we go. There are my key points. I'm going to show you here right there. You can see my stickies. 
right there. Yeah, well, very well. Are, that's very uh, brother like. Very that was Greg-like. that was. These are Greg approved stories. Are the yellow stickies, mm. right? He is also a motivational speaker, travel expert, and lecturer at conferences and special events. Joseph has collaborated on such projects there, Junior, as mm-hmm. the Discovery Cover, Discovery Channel, Associated Press, ABC News, and now Joseph Rosendo. He can add the A Travel Talk Show to that list. I'm sure he's pretty excited about that. I mean, I mean, he's that's the one he's been missing. Uh, well, we're the I, only one. But <laughs> yeah, I, I might give the Discovery Channel a hit, but I think we're second billing after that. I think, yeah, we'll probably be yeah. at the bo- top of the list. No, we got to give Discovery Channel. I mean, they do good work. Okay, second. Right. Okay, yeah. second. <laughs> yeah. It's a complete we'll- honor to have him on the show, though. I mean, it's uh, this is huge. Yes, it is. So let's uh, let's put our virtual hands together and give uh, Joseph Rosen a big, as we always do, a big virtual maple leaf applause so Excellent. Well, hey colin greg nice to see you guys oh and i was hitting the screech you know uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> look actually look it's, it's maple syrup from uh, you can yeah, tell yeah. because of the maple leaf nice my wife good to see the, uh refrigerator you see we've done a pretty good job on that that guy yeah, yeah, yeah. it looks like it okay joseph so we gave a little bit of an intro to you about your wonderful history. And uh, maybe you could give us a little bit more background on uh, who is Joseph Rosendo and possibly a little bit of insight onto your, your Emmy Award winning, multiple Emmy Award winning show, Travel Scope TV. Well, you know, I've, uh, I've, I'm a guy who fell in love with travel when I went to Europe for the first time in 1969. That'll date me. And uh, I just fell in love with the whole experience, the cultural experience of travel and the different perspective you get when you traveled. And then I just needed to make it my, uh, my life to, um, to, to do it all the time. I fortunately enough ran into this quote from Henry David Thoreau, which says, if one advances confidently in the direction of their dream and endeavors to live the life they have imagined, they will have a success undreamt of in common hours. And so I spent my time wow. trying to do that and it's it's a truism that I've carried around with me, mm-hmm. and uh, managed to uh, be a travel writer solely, uh, exclusively for a number of years, and then uh, uh, transitioned into doing a, a travel radio show. And uh, met my wife 15, 16 years ago, and we started uh, working on the television show. And we've been doing that for 12 seasons, as you mentioned. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just a uh, a guy who couldn't keep quiet about travel and uh, started. And so my editor, when we had a, a, tra- a magazine that was in print and now, now is online at travelscope.net, uh, she said, you should do a column where you're just waxing poetic about travel and how important travel is to you and how important it is to the world. And so I started doing a musings column and that musings column has become the book musings, the, short happy pursuit of life, a short happy pursuit of, of uh, pleasure, I should say, and other journeys. And yep. uh, then that kind of says it. And that's kind of who we are and what we've done. Excellent. Uh, been doing it for a long time. Traveled in 93 countries, 50 for wow. the television show, but 93 countries. I've been blessed to have the opportunity to do that. And I can't think of anything I'd like to do better. Excellent. Excellent. Wow. What a history, what a story, I'm telling you. Yeah. You so, said 14 or 15 years you met your wife. Do you, are, are you unsure about that? You get in trouble there. <laughs> no, she said nearby, so I'm trying to get, we got married in 2007, but and we had known each other for several years before that, but we. we got married in 08. Oh, excuse me, we got married in 08. Oh, oh, oh. But see. You're in trouble <laughs> now. Uh, 2007 sounds like a good thing. That's when we moved to Topanga. Sorry, Joseph. <laughs> Not married the next year, but we've been married for uh, a good amount of time and worked together the entire time, which is, uh, so we've really actually been together. That's, see, that's why I get confused with the dates because uh, it's like we've been together for 24 hours a day for, for all of those years. And it's, uh, it's like we've uh, been together, you know, 20 and 30 years but it's been mm. wonderful and it's been uh an exciting adventure like yeah. 
this is the life we're trying to live is adventure. Yeah. Nice. And what, what, um, good recovery though. I guess now, 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 you're good. now you, now you're good. That was a good recovery there. You still yeah. back paddling a little. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> Thanks. So what makes travel scope different? And I know, and I think, uh, we, we sort of have a pretty good idea of what, but what maybe you can tell us what makes travel scope a little bit different than other travel shows. Well, back in 1969, when I went to Europe for the first time and fell in love with travel, it was quite clear to me what was important about travel and it was people. It was people yes. and their culture. And we have a wonderful, wonderful world that we live in, surrounded with people, with all sorts of different cultures and different kinds of people. And instead of being afraid of them, we need to embrace them and embrace those cultures and learn from them. I'm blessed to be on PBS here in the United States because the PBS audience is considered to be lifelong learners. They always want to learn more. And people are, the, are carry the information of this world. And that's what we try to feature on our show, is the culture. We try to interact with people. We try to do it in a spontaneous way, just like you guys. And we try to give them an opportunity to tell their story. And that's how we're different. Yeah, we go to wonderful places. We get to see you know, the Eiffel Tower and the Arc de Triomphe and the Great Wall of China. And we take people to fantastic <laughs> destinations. The great, you know, you you showed in your wonderful clip that you did to introduce me, uh, the the faces of Easter Island, those great Moai. Yeah. Easter. So we do get to take people to wonderful things to see, but that's you know that's checking off a list of sites. The real experiences in travel are the experiences you have with people, and they happen everywhere all the time. We'd love to go to uh, markets in our show because mm -hmm. that's where people are being people and you get to meet all of them in one big place and you can interact with them and we've had wonderful experience with them. So the difference between Travel Scope, Joseph Rosendo's Travel Scope and other travel shows is that we concentrate on culture, the diversity of our world and we spend our time with the people we meet and we tell their story. It's not just about me and what I do and who I am. It's about the people we meet, and that's what drives our show. Like we were saying in the, in, in the pre-room when we were all sitting around the, in the virtual room there, that uh, the one thing that I think everyone agrees that is truly passionate about the travel and tourism industry is that it's the culture. And, and like we I think we were discussing earlier, if uh, you, you can't really go on a trip if you're not going to uh, immerse yourself into that culture. Right. 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 And by the way, Canadians are pretty great people. <laughs> Let me tell you, we have 20 television shows on Canada, and I can't even begin to count all the radio shows I did on Canada. We've traveled all throughout the country, almost everywhere. And uh, in fact, I'm like I'd li I will even say that I probably know more about Canada than some Canadians. Yeah. But what Most. we really <laughs> enjoyed in Canada are the Canadians. They're open-hearted, welcome to uh, to us wherever we've been. And diversity of the country, the diversity of the scenery of the country, and the places that you can visit—it's never ending. When you wow. think that Ontario alone is bigger than most, almost as big as Europe, then you can uh, get a good sense of what you're dealing with when you go up to Canada. And all the different people, the French, the English, and everybody living together. I like it, I like it, I like the fact that Canada is a country of compromise. It was formed by people sitting around a table and agreeing to get together and form a country. Mm -hmm. It wasn't formed in battle, it wasn't formed in war, it was formed in people agreeing. And it's great to go to Canada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we did have to protect it at one time. You know that, eh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> from, Thanks for from, all that, from, Joseph. From, uh, from your friends south of you, yeah. Yeah. Thank uh, you for that, though, Joseph. We're very proud of yes. uh, of who we are, and that um, we do have a good reputation around the world, and we we are, uh, you know, we're proud of who we are, as most are. And uh, thank yeah. you. Appreciate it.
You even like, said that in a very modest way. <laughs> it was a, I thought it was more stumbling, you're, you're, but yeah. Were you trying to brag there? I could hardly tell. Was, <laughs> no, yeah. Very, very no, Canadian we're, we're humble, right? Very Canadian. Joseph, you've been doing it for uh, 40 years now, mm -hmm. uh, just a bundle of energy and a bundle of information. You, have, But one thing uh, uh, I'm sort of getting from the bio and the, and the research that we've done is that you really like to immerse yourself. You've touched on it physically, mentally, and culturally. Um, into the environment that you're traveling to. So my question is this is, how has the travel industry changed in the last 40 years? Well, I think it's gotten better in many ways because uh, what, they, what the tour companies and uh, the people who market travel, uh, the destinations, uh, the tourism companies, what they've learned is that what people are after is experience. And what people is at, are after are experiences in the country and with the people in the country. So they've developed better product for the traveler to come and experience that gives them the opportunity to do that. I mean, when you think of the old, if it's Tuesday, it must be Belgium kind of tour that used to happen uh, before uh, my generation started traveling. Uh, then you get a sense of that's changed. Nobody would put up with that today. Mm -hmm. uh, tour companies, uh, cruise companies, they all plan educational tours for their clients where they can uh, really have a, an authentic experience. Everybody talks about authenticity. Mm -hmm. Everybody talks about that. When we were speaking with the people in New Brunswick, Canada, the tourism people, oh, I've, oh, I've, I've traveled to New Brunswick so many times, and we, we sat down, they had us come in and they, they, they wanted to, to develop a product. And so they, what did they do? Very smart, well, smartly, they brought travel journalists in uh, from the United States and elsewhere to talk to them about what their audiences wanted and what they wanted nice. was experiences. So they went through their province and they figured out all of the different kinds of experiences they could get off our people with the province and with the people in the province. Mm -hmm. And that is exactly, that is the main way things have changed. I'm proud of, of my generation of, of kids back way back then in the 60s and where who okay. traveled with backpacks and taught the world and taught our country, particularly in the United States, taught, taught us that there was a different way to travel. And that has caught on. We're now, well, we're now really old, but we're getting older and older. But we uh, we became the travelers, and the travel industry started turning in that direction. That's what's really changed. Yeah, uh, that's a great point because it's true that I mean, if you look around you, anytime you're looking around you, everyone's doing the backpacking now. Everyone's carrying a day pack. Everyone's traveling with day packs. It's, it's a whole different type of travel uh, attire, and maybe uh, travel curiosity is what it's spirit very good exactly but you know people are you know i'd like to say that when you travel you should augment yourself and i don't mean get 10 pound fat, fatter eating french pastry although that happens too <laughs> what, what i mean is you should come back larger than you are bigger than you were a different per person in so many ways and these days uh you now have the opportunity because the guys who have who put these trips together and help people travel have caught it understood it and are making it possible for you to have those experiences that make you bigger that all meant augment us as people as personalities exactly. exactly traveling is such an education like you say totally definitely. agree there yeah definitely yeah so based on based on that so with all this travel and all this brain influx of travel information that you've had over your over your years joseph and proudly so based on your observations what uh what are some of the major shifts or do you see any sort of what what do you see sort of happening in the future are travel habits changing are destination selection changing is the journey becoming more important than the destination what are some of the things that you see happening well, what, what I think that I think you just you said a brilliant thing there. The journey has become the journey is always the most important thing, and that to a, a shameless plug that is kind of what the book is about. The book <laughs> is about uh, talking about the journey, and the journey is what is uh, my journey, my personal journey, my travel journey, and my life journey. 
it's like three books in one. It's a, uh, a how-to travel book. It's a destination book about, we fe I feature destinations of the book, and it's a me memoir. So the journey is always what has, has been important. It never wasn't important. Mm -hmm. And what you get from the journey is maybe different now. But that's, I, I, I see in the future, you know, it's hard. We've learned one thing from this pandemic is you can't predict the future. You can't predict tomorrow. Uh, no. We're still we're still trying to finish season 12 of Joseph Rosendo's Travel Scope. And, uh, you know, we're doing our best to get it done. We just want them to, if they'll let us back in, we'll do, we'll do our job. So yeah. that's where that's where we are. But um, but the, the journey has always been what was important to people. And when you when when traveling with that in mind is what's going to be what people are going to be uh, concentrating on. I think there's going to be more in-country travel for, in every country. They're, they're, they're in-country, their tourists, their home tourists are going to see their own country a lot more than they have maybe in the past. Uh, there are wonderful things in everybody's country. Uh, and but the tourist, tourism is going to stay local somewhat but the, the desire to go out and meet other cultures is still there. Of course, in Canada, you can travel around Canada and you'll meet all sorts of different cultures, one of the most diverse countries in the world. Same here in the United States. Um, but still, we're going to be wanting to, we, the foreign travel will always be an allure. The yeah. exotic places, Bhutan, Asia, you know, China, the Africa, the South America, those are still going to be drawing us like magnets. So it's not going to change that much, mm -hmm. in, I think, in the, our desire. A little bit more traveling at home, but we're still going to want to see the world. So, okay. and, and I wouldn't make any bets on what's going to happen tomorrow. It's kind of difficult. <laughs> yep. So what, what would you say your best guess, uh, Joseph, is uh, on the future of tourism? What is your best guess of what it's going to look like? And I and, 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 and fully understand that we can't predict it. But if you were to look at the trends and the tips and what's happening around you and the industry and the restrictions and how the cruise is reacting and all these different factors that are playing, what do you, what, what are you, what's your best guess on the future? Well, you know, people have always got to weigh their sense of safety with their sense of adventure. They've always had to weigh that personally. I personally feel people need to draw, travel fearlessly. That doesn't mean you travel recklessly or foolishly, but you travel without fear in your heart. You can't go out and have open yourself up to other people and other experiences if you're scared to death. So make, your safe, make yourself as safe as you need to be and then go out there and step forward. So there's going to be a lot of more uh, people are going to need to be reinforced that the environment they travel in and the places they stay in are safe. So they'll have to be that bottom line, that basic uh, necessity. But uh, but I also think that people are going to there is going to there is such a pent up desire to travel that yeah. when we get the OK, when there's yeah. enough people vac vaccinated throughout the world. Mm -hmm. it, it, when we get the okay, it's going. There's going to be an explosion of travel. We're going to see more travelers. With, you're going to be traveling with more people than you ever traveled with in your life. I agree. So I would suggest you make your reservations now. You may have to cancel them because they may not let you in. Oh. We've made six sets of arrangements to travel to France to scout for our next shoot in France and to and for our own pleasure, and we've had to cancel five of them. We have one still <laughs> leaving in the wings, but it doesn't mean that you shouldn't put it out there. You put it out there what you want and mm -hmm. it will, it will eventually happen. And I'm telling you, we're going to be traveling in crowds because people are dying to hit the road again. And so that's wow. my, my one prediction I'm pretty sure of. Yeah. And, 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 and if what, how does that affect some places that were battling with over tourism pre-COVID to how is it going to affect them post-COVID? I mean, I've some of our international uh, experts and futures and strategists, they're, they're, they're really worried about this, about this first flood. Yeah, well, I think, I think they've got something to worry about. I think that, and I think uh, and us as travelers, how we can uh, mitigate some of that is we need, need to look to new places to travel. This is what I'm talking about. And they may be mm -hmm. at home or they may be abroad. 
But you need mm -hmm. to be opening up your head and hopefully a show like Joseph Rosendo's Travelscope, yeah. something like my book, our show streams on Amazon. So if you can't see us on PBS, you can go to Amazon and, and stream our shows. Hopefully people like me and like you are helping travelers make those decisions, introducing them to new places, opening up their heads on how to travel. As you know, every show, Travelscope show closes with a quote, quote from Mark Twain. The yep. travel is fatal to prejudice, bigotry, and narrow-mindedness. And we should go at that, that lesson that we're going to learn. We should mm -hmm. grab that truth and travel with that in our hand. And that should motivate us to look at the places that we're now or in the past have looked at and thought, oh, no, I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. They have, those people are like that or they're like that or that place is like that. We need to put that aside and we need to move forward and say, travel is fatal to prejudice, bigotry, and narrow-mindedness, and I'm not gonna let any of those things keep me from having the experiences that I deserve in this life, because this may be news to some people, but we only get one of them that I know of, and we better make the most of it, and we better make the most of it, which is another theme of my book, by the way, which yep. is that you have to, carpe diem, Seize the day. Every yep. moment we let slip through our fingers is a moment we will never gain again. And that's true with how we deal with our family, how we deal with our friends, and how we deal with the world. Bingo. Bingo. He's a wise man, that Joseph Rosendo. Yep. Yep. You know, another thing that we're really trying to push out here in, in Canuckville <clears throat> is low season two. Uh, we've got some really nice shoulder seasons. Uh, we seem to kind of pack everything into June, July, and August. Yet yeah, we've got a beautiful September, beautiful October. We've got a great April, May, usually depending on where you go in Canada. And uh, and then we also have a spectacular winter tourism industry, some of the best ski hills in the world, uh, snowmobiling, snowshoeing, ice fishing, and cross country. So I think if, if, if it, like you said, I believe it's a big education process as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, Banff Lake Louise, how about yeah. skiing in there instead of skiing in? I've told people, don't ski, go, go, go to Aspirin, go to Banff Lake Louise. Yeah. Nobody's there, it's cheaper, and you're going to have a wonderful time, and you're in this wonderful national parks. Yeah. You know, Actually, uh, Banff. So, you know, fall foliage, you want you want to battle the, the cars in New England? Why do that when you can go up to New Brunswick and Nova Scotia? and where there's hardly anybody looking yeah. at those beautiful things. But we did a show on the Rideau Canal from Ottawa down to south, almost to uh, to the, to uh, Kingston. And um, it was middle, it was the last cruise that we could be, last time we could be on the canal in, in and it was beautiful, mm -hmm. beautiful. Fall foliage everywhere, absolutely spectacular. So you're right, shoulder season has always been a good tip. Always been a good chip as a travel writer. We always said travel, go shoulder season, mm -hmm. go shoulder season, go shoulder season. Yep. Now, I think it's cheaper and it is less people and you'll have a, a great time. Yep, shoulder seasons rock. I think uh, one of the things, and, and like you said with the Redo Canal, we I was looking at some of your some of your clips and some of your information on uh, on all your social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Um, we saw I saw you there. You were you were right in our backyard where we're here in Maple Leaf, Canada, in our base camp. You were right in the Caribou, and you did some uh, some canoeing, I believe it was. You did. You, I saw an episode. You hung out with some beluga whales. Uh, that's pretty cool in Manitoba. Yeah. And uh, and you sat at the same table I sat at and had a high tea uh, in the Canadian Rockies uh, near Lake Louise. So uh, it's pretty impressive. So my question, Joseph, is this? Is, You've traveled to, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, I believe it's 50 countries or more uh, with your Travel Scope TV series. Um, uh, we sort of touched on it, but uh, what makes Canada unique than all the rest? What, what, in your view, being in so many countries, what's, what, what is Canada? What makes our draw so unique? Well, I mean, I have to come back to what I come back, I go to all the time people. It's mm -hmm. always people, and Canadians are very special kind of people. Your brother just showed us. <laughs> in his province, to try to break, could could hardly brag brag about uh, Canada because yeah. so, so is so generous and so gracious. Yeah, I'm uh, the we, special we, one, bro. We've we've always been treated uh, graciously in Canada, uh, so that's 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 one of the thing. That's one of the things. One of the main things. The main thing for me, wherever I travel, 
but also the diversity in Canada. It's a wide open country, all kinds of cultures that you're going to meet. You go to Toronto, how many cultures are in Toronto? We did a show on the neighborhoods of Toronto. Of course, we didn't get them all in there. I mean, mm -hmm. all kinds of different cultures, all people from all over the world in Canada in one spot. And, you know, it's just it, that, so that diversity of cultures is amazing. Then the diverse, diversity of, of, of scenery and things to do. And, uh, you know, of course, there are all of us down here in the, in the lower 48, uh, we, uh, there are a lot of people who think that Canada is one big iceberg. Oh. Uh, <laughs> but uh, that's, that's the good news in winter, but uh, it is not. And yep. there's just so much diversity in what you see. Like I was mentioning earlier, Ontario alone is larger, is larger than stretches as the whole boundaries of Europe. So imagine all those countries in one, only one province in Canada. So wow. those, that's what makes Canada unique to me. And on our 20 shows that we've done, our 20 television shows, not to mention the radio shows I did, we've covered all, a lot of those. Your First Nations people, yes. the relationship, the, the way that Canada has, has finally accepted and featured the First Nations culture. Yes. What a treasure that is. And yep. it's seen them for what they are is a treasure. Yep. The people like the Acadians, the French culture, the Quebecois, the French culture. Uh, what a what a treasure that is. You know, the, not that the English culture isn't, but mm -hmm. for those for those of us from the lower 48 coming up and uh, be able to go to France and not even cross the pond to you know Tibet. <laughs> I was talking to you prior before we started our the show tonight about the Acadians in New Brunswick, Nova Scotia. One of the great festivals in the world that I've been to is the Acadian wow. Festival that takes place to celebrate the Acadia Day on August the 15th and is in, in uh, Caraquette, uh, takes place at centered in Caraquette, New Brunswick. Um, if go. you don't go to the Acadian Festival in New Brunswick, you are missing a, a time of your life. Nobody knows how to party better than Acadians except for maybe Newfoundlanders. <laughs> but uh i'm telling you that i've never had a more wonderful time their music food uh you know i mean come on it's a french culture you get great food you get uh, uh you have the joie de vivre of the french culture with a canadian uh of, of warmth added to it you can't beat it yeah yeah nice did that, i think did that did that tell you what what canada is a little special to me yeah yes yes We're close to your heart it sounds like joseph it is so i think another thing too is uh just to touch on too is 90 percent of our population is within 200 kilometers of the u.s canadian border exactly that's, that's a lot of canada above that that's beautiful natural wild free roaming wildlife adventure tourism galore i mean mm. i think we have the best four season adventure tourism in the world uh, because we have such a massive yeah. playground. Absolutely, heli skiing, kayaking, fishing, uh, yep. uh, dog sledding. Uh, you know, like like you mentioned. I mean, I went to the Yukon. I, I spent time in the Yukon when I did my radio show. And uh, if you want to be to a place, you know, like like uh, uh, like like Service said, you know, that, that great big land up yonder, yep. where silence has lease. I mean, uh, Robert Service, the poet, the, the Yukon poet. Uh, couldn't say, couldn't, you can't, can't be said better. I mean, when you sit up there in, in a fish camp in the Yukon and you can hear the blood pulsating in your ear because there's nothing else to hear. Yeah. It's absolutely, totally quiet, except for the birds, yeah. of course, but absolutely, totally quiet. Yeah. A space yeah. like that, we have somehow, I think in the world, forgotten that there is space like that. We have great big wide open spaces down here in the United States wonderful places uh but nothing quite like that so yeah i would i there's a there's a great big space up above that that 200 miles that people need to experience as well wow. i went in one of our shows we went up to uh up on the hudson bay uh to the mo Quebec people up there and uh got ahead a first nation experience and a wilderness experience at the same time uh heaven nice. uh, that's music to our ears hey eh, junior yeah. 
Oh, yeah. And yeah. The, the, I, what always amazes me is the skies up there, too. Like, you don't have any of the light pollution. I mean, you haven't seen a sky in the Milky Way until you've been, you know, a little north and get away from all the cities and stuff. It's just amazing. Yeah, uh, Nor Norway is famous for its northern lights, but hey, it ain't got yeah. nothing on Canada. I was up there yeah. in <laughs> with the polar bears. In yeah. Turkey. Yes. I saw some amazing northern lights. Yeah. And when we were in, uh, in, in with the Mo Quebec, uh, it was uh, wonderful, beautiful Northern Lights, and and the, and the people there just go, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Any chance you've seen a narwhal? I didn't. I that's didn't, something that's I'd definitely like on my. Go ahead. Yeah, I'd like to. Certainly would love to. Definitely on my bucket list. I saw, but sure. the polar bears were kind of fun. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, amazing. Uh, are you guys done now? Can we get back to the We're show? We're bonding, bro. <laughs> are you guys <laughs> bonding? Yeah. I want to be part of the show. We're going to push you off the screen soon. And, you know, yeah, yeah, exactly. Unplug I it. it. I love it. <laughs> the, third, the third brother. The third yeah, brother. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm going to jump a bit here to this particular, we touched on it a bit. Uh, you've got your Mark Twain quote. And I'm really, I'm really interested in the backstory to this one. Um, again, I'll just, um, I'll just reiterate it. Uh, travel is fatal to prejudice, bigotry, and narrow-mindedness. And you also, and I, and I got this out of your book, is you also your favorite writing shirt has this quote on it. Right. Um, I want. Is that still kicking around? And maybe you can give us a you little know, bit it's, of. A, it's a souvenir. It's got big holes in it. You know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it was. It was like. Uh, you know. I think that 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 shirt is from 1985 when I started the radio show. Uh, uh, but uh, yes, I, I could can't wear it anymore. But I got it. I've kept it. it nice. It reminds me nice. of of what that is about. And what that is about is that we should travel like I was saying earlier, to augment yourself and to be greater and better. Yeah. And mm -hmm. what better way to travel than without uh, prejudice, bigotry, and narrow-minded. And, and there's a, another part to that quote where Mark Twain says, and th it is something that is sorely needed. He's talking to Americans at that time, sorely needed in our country right now. And no one it gets, no one develops uh, the, the milk of human kindness or brotherhood by staying in one little corner of the planet. Oh, you have yeah. to get out there and expand yourself so you can expand your heart. You know, you don't want to be the Grinch. You know, remember even the Grinch's heart grew. So you want to, <laughs> the way our hearts grow is by experience. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's very good. That's very good. It's a very, very, uh, interesting quote and it, it has so much, uh, uh, backstory and meaning to it, I find. I, 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 I thought it was quite, it really sticks out, and you refer to it a lot. Every show, every, almost, all, your book, all over, right? Well, well it was, it became, on the radio show, I, I started it once, I started at the end of the radio show once, and my engineer, good old engineers are very helpful, besides getting your show on the air, uh, guys with the codes, and he said, you know, you use a lot of different quotes at the end of your show, because I was using a lot of different travel shows. He said, this one is the killer. You should use it every time. Yeah. And for 23 years, I did. And for Travel Scope, for the last uh, you know 12, 12 seasons, I've used it on every show. And you know, it's amazing if people respond to it. Yeah. Uh, my, my audience, I get response. I get letters. I get phone calls. People say, you know, that that quote says just spoke to me and says so much to me. And that's exciting to me to know that our show it reaches people in a way and touches them. And that's really also reinforcing to me. The thing that has touched people about all of our shows has been the way we are with people and the yep. way people have been with us. And that is so encouraging at a time, particularly in our country, when we're so divisive and everybody is at each other's throats seemingly. It's so encouraging to know that people at heart are really all connected and are really all brothers just like you guys yeah yeah so then comes along you do the travel scope show for 12 seasons successfully you have won uh a, you've won multiple emmy awards you've won a whole bunch of awards um and then all of a sudden covid hit and you said you know i'm gonna write a book and here <laughs> it is 
This is the book we've been talking about. It's called Musings, The Short, Happy Pursuit of Pleasure and Other Journeys. Uh, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. It's like I'm traveling with you when I read this. It's like I'm right there when you're packing the luggage and I go, Joe, no, don't put that lens in there. Joe, no, not that. No, not those shoes, Joe. It's <laughs> like I'm right there. So sure. um, why? And he does talk to himself when he reads. So I mean. <laughs> I do. I had a conversation you with a few times in the book, Joe. That's just silly. That's yeah. just. Silly. <laughs> and then I'm, I'm going. This is great. So, why a book, Joe? What was the motivation? Well, and by the way, I have to say, I, I won the uh, the Globe and Mail Award, uh, Canada Tourism Award as well. So wow. that's, that's how much I like. I love Canada. Anyway, uh, the motivation nice. was uh, it was a dream I'd had really for a long, long time, but I never had time. To uh, I knew these stories that I'd written over the years for my musings column were were something I wanted to share with people, and and also that it said a lot. It gave me an opportunity to talk, share myself personally, and that's kind of what Travel Scope's about. That's kind of what I'm about, and uh, and I hope your your audience uh, is picking a little bit of that up. That is 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 sharing who we are is important to me, and so. Um, I knew this was something I wanted to get together, but I never had the time to do it. Tell you the truth, then the pandemic hit, and I had a lot of time, a yeah. lot of time. And I, said, <laughs> and I said, "Well, if now, if not now, never." And uh, it started out as a, "Well, I'll just put the, st the story together, and that'll be it." And then it became, "Well, I know I've, I've got to write new introductions to all these stories, and and you know, and and wait a minute, there are there are a couple of stories that have been riding around in my head that I need to." To write and 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 add to this group and and then oh yeah we sh I should have some uh, photos in there I, particularly the ones from my distant past as a kid since I really had the travel bug as a kid and I didn't know it but I, but it obviously came to the fore once it was tapped into so then it just grew like kind of like rice it got bigger and bigger and took up all of my time <laughs> and it took up the, most of the pandemic. But finally, it got out, and uh, and uh, there is a great sense of uh, a relief and accomplishment. I'm glad that through this horrible time, which has been horrible for so many people, mm -hmm. that that I that something good was for for me personally was able to come out of it. And hopefully, in in the spirit of sharing, in the spirit of education, the spirit of entertaining, because I that I, I I hope it's entertaining as well that that i was able to contribute something at this time and so yeah that was how it came about yep yep okay is there is there going to be a follow-up uh god knows maybe uh yeah i just need to live many many more years <laughs> but, yeah, i mean it did spark some ideas of of other other stories that need to be in the book so who knows uh I, I need to just spend uh some concentrated time again sitting down mm -hmm. and doing that Hopefully I'll be back on the road again and working and, and finishing season 12 and, and, and experiencing the world and not sitting behind a computer, but uh, you never know. Let me put it that way. Maybe. Excellent. France, here we come. <laughs> yeah, France, here we come. I love that grew like rice. <laughs> That's a so, great quote. Yeah. So what, what if uh, for people like myself who are reading, your, who are uh, enjoying and reading your book there, Joseph, what are the, if, when you're writing this, what are the sort of the takeaways? And I, so you sort of touched that. What are sort of the takeaways um, are you hoping that we are getting when we're reading your book? Well, hopefully the, the different stories hopefully have something to teach, or at least you get to hear me preach. I don't know. But, uh, you know, like uh, one story, uh, El Dorado is about uh, the fear of missing out and how that can screw up your own experience and hopefully yes. humorously you uh you uh you read along and you travel with me as i go crazier and crazier and crazier in search of el dorado that golden place that's just over there somewhere when right here it's it's absolutely totally pure gold but you're always looking over there so hopefully there's a, a lesson in all of it in mm -hmm. each of the story mm -hmm. uh, uh teach something or or, 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 or pass some time for people. But uh, I think generally the, the basic giveaway is what I said earlier. Uh, you know, um, Carpe Diem, Seize the Day. Uh, yeah. One of the stories, uh, the title is Do It Now. 
don't wait. Don't put off to tomorrow what you can do today. Mm -hmm. And don't don't not don't 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 forget tell everybody you love them. Take, treat everybody as kindly as you can and uh, do everything you can do as long as you have can do it. And never say never. Uh, and never say that you it can't be done. Uh, mm -hmm. Just go out there and try to do it. So I guess at the end of the story, the last story in the book, um, uh, it's it's a story that's uh, that's a take off of the, of, the, of a play called Our Town by Thornton Wilder, and in it, uh, a woman comes back. She she's at her gravesite, and and she gets the opportunity to go back to one day in her life, and she goes back to her thirteenth birthday and realizes how much time people waste, how much time they waste yeah. not loving each other. And yeah. uh, so the story ends with uh, the character who is telling this story to someone else, uh, lying in bed and in the, the, the character in the, in the play coming to, to him and looking over him and saying, um, is it true? Does he, you know, because the, because the the uh, the godlike figure in the play says uh, is asked, is do people ever really appreciate every moment of their life? And he says, well, poets do a little. That's it. Mm. And so they're looking at the fellow in bed, and they say, does he really think that he can be someone who can really appreciate? every moment of his life yeah and the godlike figure says it's a dream <laughs> wow. so i think that's the end of the book is yeah that should be all of our dream yeah well I, I love you joseph you're a hell of a man thank you so much you guys are too <laughs> but anyway i think that if i was if there's a takeaway it's that it's a okay. dream it's a dream we all should all pursue mm -hmm. and so you have france you have the book, the book first. Now, now it's France. Um, so with all and getting back and getting back into your show and getting into the groove of things. So, if we took those out of the picture, is there anything uh, that you're you've got planned for the future that that is special that you've got ideas about? Now I'd like to do more of what I've been doing <laughs> and, uh, and, to more, and to get more of you involved. In it. I mean, that's why I was saying earlier that our show. Uh, you know streams on Amazon. So if you don't can't get the PBS station and you can't watch us on PBS or your public station You can certainly stream us on Amazon. Uh, yeah, my, I think there really is uh, I, I'd like to do more of what I've been doing and I'd like to have all you guys come along with me and all your viewers and all of your audiences join me on all of these adventures. I think that's it. I mean, uh, uh, now I have no, I, you know, that, that's enough surprise for me to tell you the truth because yeah. <laughs> you know, every day when you're on the road and every day when you're doing what I do, and I'm so blessed to have had the opportunity to do it yes. that, um, that, you know, that, that's, that's all you want to do is to do more of it. Yeah. We, yeah. we, we definitely know that feeling. I mean, when we're on the road, it's, I mean, every day is, is new. Every day is different. Every day is special. And yeah, I've always I mean, loved it's... traveling with the people I love, and uh, that's why uh, traveling, having your audiences join me would, is is something that I really would would love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I can tell I mean. from I can tell personally uh, for Junior and I uh, we're definitely getting travelized tonight. <laughs> oh yeah, that's, right. <laughs> that's, that's the word tonight's word travel. That, that's it. So. If this is the case, and you were, uh, and we again, uh, we sort of touched it, but before we let you go, and maybe you want, is there anything out there, uh, anything you'd like to talk about, anything we've missed um, that you would like to share with our audience, Joseph? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> ah, they're all they're calling in. It's a phone in show. It's a call in show. It's a call in show. Yeah, it's go a call ahead, flashback. Yeah. yeah, well, I would, I would. Uh, there, there really isn't. Uh, Nothing that I would say. We just got a call from Montreal, actually. Maybe one of your, one of your well, listeners, my wife's going to, uh, we're going to call him back. And uh, nice. yeah, I would just say that there's really nothing that I think I missed. Sweetie, you want to say something? She's off the air. But <laughs> I, I would say that, um, you know, I don't think, I think 
more of doing more of what we're doing and 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 have people what i would really wish for us is to is to is to lower our level of fear and and mm -hmm. that's what i would uh i would would, would say and you know i um and and anything that we can do to help people reduce their level of fear, uh, fear of their neighbor, fear of the guy uh, across the street and across the world, uh, uh, then that would be uh, that would be something we devoutly wish for for the world is to to lower our level of fear and to take advantage of this wonderful thing called life that we gift of life that we've all been given, and uh, and I and I and I, I want to thank you guys. For giving me the opportunity to come on tonight you guys have got a great thing going the brothers of tourism uh count me as an honorary brother i hope and, <laughs> you're because, in uh, you guys are you know just uh want to thank you for for giving me the opportunity to come on and, and i want to thank your audience and your your viewers for for listening to you and 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 urging them to continue to do so and to tuning in uh us all tonight excellent well thank you uh joseph for the very kind words uh we have uh we have you to look up to and uh we have uh yourself to thank for for blazing the trail i mean really it's for travel shows i mean you've been a big bla trailblazer uh in leading the way on that if we can even come close to your success i think uh, uh we'd be very uh, happy with that lifestyle and be very ec ecstatic with the the career path so again joseph thank you from uh, myself uh, thank you from Junior. Uh, we hope to have you back on the show sometime later, um, and we'll keep in touch by all means. Thank you. Have a good night. Till next time. Bye bye. Good night. Till next time. So, wow. Junior, that, that was... hour felt like five minutes. I know, isn't it? It's so cool when you got a great guest, yeah. and 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 you're just like. You're, you're dropping on every word and it's like you're looking at the clock and you're going oh my god that's it eh yeah and he huh. loves to talk I mean, it's i obvious. know we got it we got it awesome. we got to figure out how to have joseph uh back on the show uh down the road and we can have sort of follow-up on how uh as covid sort of rolls out and tourism rolls out and man if he comes up to canada um if he wants to get travelized back he better give us a show let us say we gotta figure out how to get him up here <laughs> How are we gonna travelize? Get him back to Canada. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Travelize him. Well, we know. Hey, what we'll do is we'll just leave a little, a little thing and say, "Here's the wine route." We'll tell him this is a new wine route and a bannock route and a poutine route and a screech yeah. route. Follow he this. Wants experience Canada. We can put it all in one. Yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. It's great. I love getting travelized. I do. It's so awesome. I'm so mm, pumped. I'm so pumped. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's so he's so true about you know just opening up our minds and not being scared of mm -hmm. of things in your neighbor and. I think when we do our bit, uh, there's going to be a lot of, uh, including ourselves, a big uh, whole bunch of us that are going to be Joseph uh, Rosendo fans and uh, followers and followers. I suggest everyone, as we've been putting up Joseph's uh, website, uh, we've also been flashing across the screen his Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Now, if you're like me, I went and followed them all because I want to, <laughs> I'm going to live through Joseph for a while when he's on his exactly. way. Exactly. And I suggest all of you viewers today and down the road, once we put this together and we fly it off into the social media hemisphere, um, make sure that you give uh, give him a, a look on his uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. And as he said, if you don't get PBS, you can get it on Amazon and get live streaming. And yes. I hope I got that right, Joseph. Um, I made a note, so I hope that's right. So thank you everybody for joining us tonight for our live gig with us and joseph uh, for the others who will see this recorded version down the road come and join us every tuesday 7 p.m pst for the live show on our a Canada trial facebook and youtube page at 7 p.m pst we are the cobra host of the a travel talk show i'm greg that's junior colin the brothers of tourism the cobra founders of a canada travel.com and the brains and brawn behind the a canada marketing group tomorrow you will find this fantastic interview with joseph <coughs> rosendo on our live travel community feed on our award-winning a canada travel.com website
Uh, we have a live feed. Click social community at the top, and you will see our live feed. And that's a social community where people can contribute your Canada adventures, tips, techniques, lifestyles, and all so forth. And you will also see this on our Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, Tumblr, LinkedIn. And we throw it up on a couple of Reddit feeds just for good measure because that's just what we do here at A Canada. So we'll see you next week. Same time, same place, same brothers. 7 p.m. PST. <laughs> same, same brothers. Same, same brothers. brothers. 7 p.m. PST right here on the account child Facebook and YouTube pages. And remember, plan smarter, book better, stay longer. Plan your travels with acantravel.com. Better yet, watch our yeah, website yeah. and social media. And for when you join us on a Canadian Adventure Seeker, be one, come one, become one. And if ain't Adventure Seeker here, it's one of the coolest clubs in Canada. Peace out, can't be safe. Okay, Junior, dazzle them with your commentary. I was going to say, go out and buy his book. Obviously, it's, uh, well, not obviously, but it sounds like a great read. And it's something every traveler should uh, should pick up and learn a few tips about uh, how to travel right so uh next week uh, i'm sure you'll all join us here we have rolf hicker he's an award-winning photographer and filmmaker from yours truly vancouver island which is where me uh me and the bro uh grew up uh he's worked with companies he's huge he's worked with porsche bmw national geographic reader's digest the list goes on so be here, 7 o'clock p.m. next week. 